So this is a little offline. For those out there in the interweb that are listening to this, happy 244th birthday if you're a Marine. Tomorrow's Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day for those who serve. And maybe you didn't know this, but tomorrow is also Canadian Remembrance Day. And it's their Memorial Day where they honor those that died in the service of their country. Just trivia. Thanks, Jerry, for bringing uh, you know, the lead in for um, the geriatric crowd that's gone to Myanmar. <clears throat> you know, I wonder what those folks over there think when these three gray-haired old guys come tooling into their country and you know want to share th this good news about Jesus Christ and the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit to help them to overcome the things in their life. And they're probably wondering, are these guys nuts? <laughs> yeah. How many of you have been on an international flight for more than 12 hours? Boy, isn't that fun? Yeah, it is not much fun. And uh, it is physically exhausting. And that's from when I was a young man. I have shared with some of you the last time I rode on an airplane was 1994. Yeah. I had enough. <laughs> yeah. So this morning what I want to talk about was exactly what Jerry was talking about was uh, Steve, Jeff, and Don's witness for Christ. And I want to talk about the witnesses of Christ and also the witnesses for Christ. Uh, starting this morning in Matthew chapter 5, picking up in verse 14, the scripture says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You know, I'm, I can only imagine that if I was um, a young guy in Myanmar and living the life that I lived, and uh, these guys from America came over and they started talking about this great news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and how I can have a much greater life than before just by paying attention to what they're saying and looking into the scriptures and seeing what God wants for me. I'd be very grateful those guys made the trip. You know what I mean? I'd be very happy that they came over. So their light and our light is supposed to shine as a witness to the world that we serve Jesus. Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, the Son of God. So I'm going to take a quick look at some of the witnesses of Christ this morning, the examples that they left for us, and also to part two is to look at our responsibility to be witnesses for Christ now. So part one, the witnesses of Christ. So we'll try to do this, and you know, this isn't because I'm just trying to fill all the space in with verses here. This is also for you. So if you're talking with somebody you can say, oh, I remember the guy said something about witnesses for Christ. Go all the way back to when he was uh, born, before he was born. Turn with me to Luke uh, chapter 1. So this is sort of like a, a long encouragement. But I want to give you all the verses that you might need to be a good witness for Christ. So Luke chapter 1, picking up in about verse 30. This is where the angel says to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and he shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And drop down to verse 38 to get Mary's response. Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Awesome words for anyone to hear. And yet this young unmarried girl heard these words. And she said, Okay, whatever. I'm available. Let it be me. Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. 
Even during Jesus' lifetime, there were doubters and scoffers, even though he did many wonderful works in their sight. In Matthew chapter 16, Matthew 16, picking up in about verse 13. <clears throat> when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, meaning his confession, <clears throat> I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So the rock that the church was to be built on is not Peter, but the rock is the confession that Jesus is the Christ. As the Apostle Paul confirms in his letter to the church in Ephesus, turn to Ephesus chapter, or Ephesians uh, chapter 2. My tongue is just moving a little too fast. I'll slow it down. Picking up in about uh, verse 19, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church. He says, Now therefore... You are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Jesus is our mediator and the Savior of the world, the Christ, the only sacrifice for sins that would be acceptable. There is no other way. In John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus was born of a virgin, conceived of the Holy Spirit, lived a perfect life, tempted in all points, yet was without sin, crucified for our sins, buried, rose the third day, ascended into heaven, and is at the right hand of God. So let's look at a couple of more witnesses who saw and touched the Jesus who is the Christ of God. Uh, turn back to uh, John chapter 1 real quickly. Like I said, there's a lot of verses here. Uh, John chapter 1, picking up in about um, verse 6. John the Baptist, his mother was a cousin to Mary, so in John 1, 6 it says, uh, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Drop down to verse 29. The next day John, same John, uh, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I have said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel, therefore I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending <coughs> and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Excuse me. I have some cooties that I'm working through. <coughs> Turn with me to John chapter 5. <coughs> Jesus speaking <coughs> says, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. You have sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Yet I do not receive testimony from man, but I say these things that you may be saved. Another witness of Christ was the works of Christ. He healed the sick, he gave sight to the blind, he fed the multitudes, walked on water, calmed the storms, and raised the dead back to life. If any of those things were accomplished by anybody here, you'd have my complete and undivided attention. Just so you know. These are another witness of Christ. Jesus would <coughs> say in John 5, 36, but I have a greater witness in John's for the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. 
The things that he did bore witness that he was who he said he was. How about us? Are we bearing witness with our lives that we are followers of Jesus Christ? Can people tell we are followers of Christ by the things that we say and the things that we do? Remember Thomas, he needed more than the witness of others to believe that Jesus had returned in John chapter 20. John chapter 20, picking up in about oh, verse 25. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, <coughs> his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. And Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. <coughs> Tom, <coughs> excuse me. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in his book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing in <coughs> his name, you may, have, you may have life in his name. <coughs> I thought this was going to be a bit difficult, but that's okay. You guys don't mind, do you? <coughs> Remember, uh, he wasn't the only apostle that was looking for proof. In John chapter 14, 8 through 11, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it's sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father, so how can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. The witness of the works was a powerful witness, and yet the Lord still provided more. Another witness for Christ was God himself. Now, Jesus had gone to uh, John the Baptist at the Jordan River to be baptized by him, and John objected and said, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me? Jesus said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And that's in Matthew chapter 3, verses 14 through 15. Picking up in verse 16, it says, When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Or was that the only time that God spoke from heaven regarding Jesus? Matthew chapter 17, picking up in uh, verse 1, we have another encounter here. <clears throat> now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is a good thing. It is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and do not be afraid. When they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. I wonder what it would be like to hear from God directly from heaven. Hit the dirt, buddy. Bury your face in the mud and just pray that, you know, he'll be merciful. Just what would you do if you heard from God himself? Another witness of Christ was the written word. Written documents can be witnesses long after we leave this earth. The scriptures also are a witness for Christ, even more so because they witnessed of him long before his birth and long after his physical death. Somewhere around 725 years before the birth of Christ, the prophet Isaiah had this to say about the coming of the Lord in Isaiah chapter 7. 
<coughs> Picking up in about verse 10. <coughs> Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, speaking of King Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it from Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Then he said, Hear now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Curds and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know how to re shall Excuse me, for before the Lord shall know to refuse the Take a breath. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land shall that you dread will be forsaken by both her kings. <clears throat> Isaiah nine, six through seven says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Yeah, and fortunately for you, I put a little note on here, Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 12, and I put next to it time and a question. Yeah, fortunately for you, time. That's up to you to read, Isaiah 53, and you'll get a very graphic description of Jesus. Now, these prophecies were made over 700 years before Jesus was even born. <clears throat> and now that we know that they were accomplished, does that not increase our faith that Jesus is the Son of God? If you needed one witness or two witnesses or three, but you've already had five, okay? There's a lot of witnesses that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. So somewhere around a thousand years before Christ, King David wrote prophetically in Psalm 16 and 9, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. And a thousand years goes by, and Peter on the day of Pentecost is explaining to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ and uses this very same scripture to witness for Christ. Acts chapter 2, <clears throat> picking up in about verse 29. Peter speaking to the Jews on the day of Pentecost. He says, Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, like about a thousand years ago, and his tomb is with us today. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Moses also spoke about Jesus in Deuteronomy 18, and the list of prophetic references goes on and on and on. But there were other witnesses of Christ, were those who knew him personally. The apostles were obviously very good witnesses. They walked with the Lord for three and a half years and not only saw the works he did, but did some of their own. And Acts 4 and 33 tells us, And with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. During the early days of the church, the apostles were doing what they were supposed to be doing, preaching the gospel and got themselves arrested by the religious leaders, the same ones who crucified the Lord. In Acts chapter 5, Picking up in about verse 25, Scripture says, So one came and told them, saying, Look, the men who you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked him, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. <clears throat> but Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 26. 
excuse me. It'll go in a second. <clears throat> Moses, uh, uh, and yeah. So after sharing this great hope of salvation from God with these religious and zealous men, their response was, well, when they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. So the point is, don't be surprised if you're opposed or rejected after becoming a witness for Christ. It may not go well in all cases, which leads us into how being a witness for Christ is necessary. Now, one of the easiest ways to learn a new job is to have somebody show you how to do it. Excuse me. Those of us who have had children, we know it's one thing to tell the child to get a broom and sweep the floor, and then it's another thing for the child to sweep the floor effectively. Now, smarter children, what they do is they just kind of languish a little bit, and they expect you to keep showing them over and over again. Well, I've almost got it this time. Could you show me one more time? Yeah. I can imagine that, you know, some teachers run into that too. Look, I've showed you how to add 2 plus 2 many times, and the answer is always the same. It's 4. But that's how people are. If you keep showing them, they'll keep watching you. I'm going to drop a dime on myself, Blaine. Blaine and I go turkey hunting. Now, he has showed me multiple times how to clean that turkey. And every time I shoot that turkey, I walk up to it, and it's like a strange beast again. Where, where do I start again? And Blaine even called me out on it this last time. He says, how many times have I showed you how to do this? And I have this concern about wasting the meat, you know, like you know, I'm, I'm going to cut it in the wrong spot and then his eyes are going to bug out, his hair is going to go vertical and, you know, he's going to jump on me or something, you know. And he told me, he says, is this going to go on forever? I always got to clean these turkeys for you? And I'm thinking to myself, well, you're the one eating them. Maybe that isn't such a bad idea. But I told him, I was honest. I says, well, you know, when I went out squirrel hunting, not last year, you know, the first one I didn't do a very good job of, of preparing. I mean, it was not very well. This next one I did was a little bit better. And the next one after that was getting even better. And I know that if I go out turkey hunting by myself, I'll get that turkey clean. You know, it may not be super pretty, and I may waste some meat. But after I do it a couple of more times, it'll be great. Now, don't tell Blaine, but as long as he's eating them turkeys, I think he should clean them, don't you? <laughs> And it's not that I mind, you know, getting my hands in the goo. I put gloves on. I do the whole thing. I don't have any. I get up to my elbows in that baby. I don't have any problem with that. It's just my concern about wasting the product. You know what I mean? So showing somebody something and having them do it is another. A little hint. If you stand there and watch them, they'll keep looking at you like, you want to do it? No, I don't want to do it. So. Being a witness for Christ. Now, Steve and, and Jeff and Don, they've gone over there. They're putting into practice. You know, they're, they're witnessing for Christ, and they've chosen to do it. And I, I praise God that they went. You know, if i got to reach in my pocket and throw a few extra dollars towards them going, yeah, I'll do that. That's a lot easier than riding that stupid plane. So I appreciate those men being witnesses for Christ and taking the responsibility on to do so. Um, it's not something uh, that I want to do. I don't mind witnessing. Just get me there by teleporter. If you can get me there by teleporter, yeah, I'll go. No problem. And when we do get the opportunity to be witnesses for Christ, we need to do it with authority. And just like I went through all them scriptures to show you the authority that's contained in the scriptures regarding those who witness for Christ and how they did it, we need to do it also. And we need to do it with authority and not with our personal opinions or feelings. And so to do so, you must first reach the common ground that the Bible is the inspired word of God. And the Apostle Paul reminded Timothy that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
The Apostle Peter also confirms this in 2 Peter 1 and 20, knowing this verse, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. You need to reach that common ground. That's pretty helpful. You're going to be witnesses for Christ. Not too long ago, I was asked uh, this question. Why does the Bible portray God as a man? I thought, okay, well, that's a little bit interesting. Of course, it was coming from a person of the female persuasion. And uh, in, to, in her mind, this was a legitimate question. Why does the Bible pers you know, portray God as being a man? Well, I use these two scriptures. And said, so if the Bible is inspired of God, and Jesus called him Father, then obviously Jesus and God want us to believe that he is of the male persuasion. He is a fatherly type figure. He's not a motherly figure. He's a fatherly figure. So Jesus did it, not me. And that's how the Bible was put together. There's not a bunch of little white-haired gray guys sitting in gray-haired guys sitting in the back room trying to make everything work their way. Like, uh, yeah, we're just going to make him, you know, a guy like one of us. It has nothing to do with it. You can prove pretty much anything with these two scriptures if you can get them to believe and understand this is from God himself and if God says it okay accept it well, once you reach that common ground you could turn to first uh, John <clears throat> chapter 5 picking up in about verse 6 speaking of Jesus this is he who came by water and blood Jesus Christ not only by water but by water and blood and it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. There are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has a witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. And this is the testimony that God has given us, eternal life, and this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. Notice verse 10 again. He believes in the son of God has a witness in himself. Well, what could that mean? How would we get the witness inside us? The only way that comes to my mind is the spirit of God that then... It might be time to take them to Acts chapter 2, verse 38, where Peter said to them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But this is not a lesson on the inspiration of the scriptures, nor is it a lesson on the necessity of baptism. It's about the many witnesses of Christ and the examples they left us to follow. Remember, we talked about how we got this witness inside us that it is the gift of God given when we obey the commandment to be baptized. And here we have the Apostle Peter telling the council exactly the same thing. The spirit within us is a witness of Christ. Jesus said this exactly to his apostles on the night he was betrayed in John 15, 26. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from my father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. <clears throat> what about us? Do our lives provide a witness that Jesus is our Lord and our King? Do our lights shine bright enough that men may see our good works and glorify God? <coughs> Excuse me. Almost done. Mary, as a young girl, had a whatever-whenever attitude. Peter and the others had the attitude of we ought to obey God rather than men. We know Paul had no concern whatsoever for the trials of this life, but was focused on doing the things of God. This morning we touched on the prophetic witness of Moses, King David, the prophet Isaiah. We touched on the witness of God himself declaring that Jesus was his son. We touched on the many works that Jesus did to prove that he had come from God. And we touched on the witness of the apostles and what they themselves did through the power of the Spirit that was in them. And for us, we touched on the witness of God 
on the word of God and the witness of the Spirit given to every man or woman who hears the words of God and obeys the commandment to be immersed for the remission of their sins. Fifty years from now, will there be any witnesses that you were a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings? Will there be any testimony that you are a good and faithful steward for King Jesus? Maybe you will be blessed with the opportunity to share the good news with a friend, relative, or co-worker, and that they may be your witnesses after you pass on. I pray that we may all be so blessed. Yes, there are many distractions in this life, such as those of the rich young ruler who couldn't let go of things. So as you go out this week, meditate on your life and your goals and see if you're being a good witness for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'd like to close with an encouragement from the Apostle Peter, who says in 1 Peter 1 and 22, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Thanks for your attention. Let's stand be dismissed with a word of prayer.